can later be used for meat, but their initial purpose is for producing milk. They are female. Come on to the farm, people. Come on. Shh, 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 shh. You understand now? Come on to me. But bulls are not for milking. Bulls serve a different purpose. The oxen, the oxen are not there for milking, they're there for labor. And really, in, in all practical forms, an ox is a castrated bull wow. who no longer reproduces, and yet he labors. Right. Wow. Wow. We're coming to you in a minute. Walk with me. Wow. Now, in talking about this ox, I'm going to talk about two commentaries for a minute, because in that day in which this context is written, they only had two beasts of burden. There was the horse and the bull, or the oxen. So they either used horses to carry weight or oxen. Okay? If I say horse, horse. ox. ox. Make sure you with me. All right, Adam, Adam Clark says it like this. This is interesting. I love this. He says, listen, the ox is much more profitable than all the beasts in the husbandry or in the animal world. It, 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 it is extremely, if it were not for the speed of it, it would almost be perfect in every aspect. Only the speed of a horse is superior to that of an ox. But every other aspect of the ox is greater than the horse. Watch this. Adam Clark says the ox lives longer. He, he scarcely has disease. He's never responsible for disease. They're clean animals. He says it's steady. It pulls its fair weight. Uh oh. It lives and fattens and maintains its strength where the horse, and it'll eat, listen, it'll eat what a horse won't eat. Horses are more finicky than oxen. I'm coming to a place. He lives. He, 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 his, oh, oh, here it is. His manure is even more profitable than our horses. Because of his chemical makeup, do you know that they use ox bile to speed up the metabolism of human beings? This ox bile, that is what's produced in the ox's kidney and liver, is used in your medication. If you have anything that's speeding up your metabolic rate, it's probably got some ox in it. Okay? Check, check your ingredients. Look at this. God goes on to say that his, his, after he's worn out from labor, after he's labored and plowed the field, his flesh is still good for leather. His horns are good for utility. His hide is almost invaluable. And listen, he, 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 he costs nothing to shoe him. He, he's a simple workman. And listen, he goes on to say, listen, if you have patience with the ox, the ox will pay off for you. Now, why do we stress the ox over the horse? Because listen, Proverbs 14 says, speak of the ox, where there is no oxen, the crib is clean. But much increase is by the strength of the ox. So listen to this. He says, here it is, where there's no anointing and no strength, everything is real simple. But when you're anointed and you have strength, you also will have problems. But your problems are going to nurture your spiritual maturity. Here it is. You can't have the ox. When we talk about muzzling the ox, I'm going to get to it in a second. But when you talk about muzzling the ox, that means you stop the ox from eating while it's laboring. And, and oh God, I can't slow down. When, when the ox is in the field and he's plowing, if you muzzle him, he labors without intake. But if you free him to eat, he works longer and harder for you, but he also excretes more. So in other words, where there's strong leadership and strong laborers, there's going to be intense problems. People who are anointed tend to have a bigger chink in the armor than folk who ain't doing that. Now, why do we compare the horse, the horse to the ox? Because again, there were only two animals in labor at that time. Now, look at what Kaufman says. 
says. Kaufman says it like this. He says, listen, things that are most desirable always carry with them certain inconveniences. Can I come down your road? You love the fact that he was a decision maker. That's why you took him home to mom. Oh, he's a decision maker. I love mother. He, he makes decisions, but what you didn't realize is with his decision making came stubbornness. <laughs> so when it came down to a decision that you didn't like, he stayed with his decision, and what you once celebrated, you now criticize. Because you want him to be strong in the area you want him to be strong in, but if he flexes his muscle with you, he's out of order. So what was once your blessing becomes your curse. Oh, you wanted him because he was the finest thing on the yard. He was the baddest thing on campus. He was sexy, he was good, and all the girls wanted Johnny. And you got him. Johnny old now, but Johnny's still sexy. Johnny's still good. And all the girls want Johnny. He just married to you now. So now what you celebrated in dating, you criticize in marriage. Because you know them he look good to you. But when you start looking good to somebody else, oh no, hold on, hold on. I'm gonna be good again. Be good to you. Stop this. Stop this. Stop this. What what you what you what you want? What was once desirable becomes an inconvenience to you. And I say, Austin, rearing a family leads to all kinds of obligations, sacrifices, and inconvenience, and even sufferings and hardships. If you're raising a family, you know that. Kaufman says that there's noise where children are. You want children? You ask them for trouble. They will keep you up when you want to sleep. They want money when you're broke. They want to go when you don't want to drive. Can somebody talk about you? Yeah, 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 yeah. I can't wait till you get your license and start driving. But then you may start driving. And you're going to call you every two minutes because now you don't trust them to go where they got to go. It's still a burden. Ooh, God. He says, he says, listen. He says, Kaufman says, as the scripture reflects, this rendition of the second clause stresses that there is a benefit to having oxen. Oh, it's a great benefit to having oxen, having strength, but you got to deal with the dirty crib. If you want the ox, you got to deal with the manure. And what churches want to do, they want the strength of a leader, but they don't want to deal with their manure. If any manure comes up, Bishop, they got to go. We put them out once we smell something. If they smell wrong, they do wrong, something happens, they got to go. So we want them while they're up, but we don't want them when they get down. Bishop. We want them in their strength. Or we want them, you don't want to deal with them. Bishop. That's good. That's good, Bishop. It's good to you when it's blessing you. But if you have to break out the shovel, as long as you got the fork in your hand, you're good. Somebody have to break out the shovel yeah. and it's got to go. Come on, Help me, Holy Ghost. I gotta get out of this. Gotta get out of this. Let's understand the ox for a minute. We're talking about the ox. The ox is the picture now of leaders. Anointed leaders, so remember the power of the anointing. The ox is the picture of you leading. The ox is a beast of burden. It is intensely bred for labor. Research is bad to work first and then to die for meat. You're working first and then you eat it. That don't sound like good purpose. You put that in spiritual terms. Paul said, Paul said, Paul said that I would rather be spent. I, I intend that if this is Paul's word, paraphrase. I intend that everything God put in me in the earth around, I take an ounce of it back to go away. What you said? See, you're missing that. Ha! Let me say it again so you can get this. Every gift that God gave me, every anointing to put on my life, I intend to take an ounce of it back to heaven with me. Look, it's not necessary for heaven, it's necessary for earth. So if you miss your anointing to be earth you will you're right to Christ. Paul said, I'm willing to be spent. That is nothing left yes. 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 How you gonna get well done if you ain't done nothing? Hallelujah. The ox is a piece of 
bird is made to carry weight. The ox is also horned. It's not a female, it's a male. And, and, and as I was studying the ox, it says that the longer the ox lives, the longer his horns get. Now here's the burden of your horns getting longer. Oxen work by way of a yoke. They used to be paired together with yoke put around their neck area. With the growth of the horns, the yoke becomes more difficult to take off. Here it is in the spiritual. The longer you minister in your anointed field of ministry, and the sharper you become, the less likely it is for you to walk away from it. I've been at it too long now. I've seen God bring me through. I've seen it turn a situation when I thought I wasn't going to make it. I just kept on preaching. I just kept on teaching. And all of a sudden, something turned. The, the growth of the skill, the ability, the utility, the usefulness of it, Increases with the life of the horns. Oxen are also well trained. Oxen, and this is crazy, I don't understand it. Because in my research, they said that genetically, as I was studying, that um, of like the 1.5 billion cows in the world, they can trace their genealogy back to. And a region in the Middle East where only 80 different strains, where 80 cows were.